Hey guys, uh, here we are again, a, another Sunday and another video. <clears throat> but you know, this Sunday is kind of special for me. Uh, I, I can't hardly believe it, but this Sunday uh, marks six years to the day of my first day at Bethel. The, it's been six years since my family and I moved here. It's crazy to think about how much life has changed for us since we've been here. Uh, for starters, we didn't have any Tanner. There was no Tanner in our lives when we moved here, and I can't hardly remember life without him at this point. But when we got here, all we had was a six-month-old little chunk that we called Ryan. I remember thinking our life was crazy and hectic with just him. Whew, wow, um, that was... <laughs> uh, if we only knew then what we know now, right? Uh, but, you know, life comes at you fast, and... And I thought about this week about all the things that have changed and everything that we've seen at, since in our time at Bethel. And um, as I thought about all of that and the things that we've done and re the relationships that we've made and, and really just the church in general, um, I couldn't help but think about my first sermon here. Now, I know that all of you remember, <clears throat> excuse me, that theological masterpiece that was my first sermon, right? Uh, furthermore, I know that all of you were, were just blown away at my wisdom and intellect. I mean, if anyone were to question that in my preaching, all they'd have to do is look back at last week's sermon and talk about wisdom and intellect being on display. I think that's, I rest my case. Uh, but as much as I wish it were true that you guys remembered my first sermon for anything, uh, sadly, if you remember it at all, it's, it's because it probably lasted about three minutes. And you guys thought to yourselves, well, maybe this guy's going to work out after all. Uh, but I went back and looked at my first sermon uh, this week that I preached at Bethel since, you know, we've been here for six years. And, and the first sermon, it was actually on a passage of Scripture in Luke, chapter 24, uh, verses 13 through 35. And this is a story uh, that really kind of resonated with me this week, and I want to share that with you all. <clears throat> now... The story is about two people who are walking from Jerusalem to a place called, or down a road to a place called Emmaus. Now the timing of this is particularly important because these two men were making their way back home after Passover week. Now this wasn't just any Passover week, this was the Passover week, the one that ended with Jesus being crucified. And these two men, though not officially a part of the Twelve, were followers of Jesus. They were disciples, if you will. And that was about a seven-mile walk uh, for them to go from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And as they were walking, they were talking amongst themselves. They were discussing everything that had happened that week and, and how they were just completely devastated at everything that had unfolded. They, they couldn't believe that Jesus was dead. No doubt these guys were a part of the crowd that brought Jesus into town on a donkey, right? They probably even had dirt and mud on the very clothes they were wearing where they laid them on the road in front of him. And in one week's time, they'd gone from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. They had, they had, the one that they had thought was going to save them was, was dead. The one they dropped everything to follow was, was gone. And there they were, walking back home, not really knowing at all what they are going to do with themselves when they got there, not really knowing what life was going to look like when they got back home, not really knowing what this new normal was. And they were just walking and talking all this out between themselves. And, and as they were talking, this stranger happened to catch up with them. And after overhearing a bit of their conversation, the stranger says, Well, what are you guys talking about? What's, what's all this stuff that's happened that you're talking about? And this stopped them dead in their tracks. They simply couldn't believe there was anyone, anyone at all, who hadn't heard about everything that had happened in Jerusalem that past week. They even said, Are you the only person in all of Jerusalem that doesn't know what took place last week? And so they, they tell him what happened. They, they say, we're talking about Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth. The words he spoke were powerful, and the things he did were, were even more powerful. They say he, he was really something special. They even went as far as to say that, that they had hoped that he was the one who was going to save them, uh, that, that he was the one who was going to redeem 
Israel. But the chief priests and the leaders handed him over to be killed. And, and they say today's the third day. And they said that we even know some women who went to his grave earlier this morning, but, but they didn't find his body either. All they saw were some, some visions of angels. And a few of his followers went to the tomb to see for themselves, and, and it was just as the women had said it was, but they didn't find his body either. He was nowhere to be found. So, so now we're just headed home. And then the stranger does something pretty incredible. He says, now, wait a minute. Didn't, didn't you guys pay attention at all to what Jesus taught you? Did, you? did you not listen to his words at all? Because he told you all of this would happen. He told you that the Messiah would suffer and die, and, and he did. Everything happened just as he said it would. You're, you're, you're still brokenhearted about all this? I don't, I don't get it because everything Jesus said would happen has happened. Don't you get it? And then the stranger explains it all to them again. He goes all the way back to Moses and, and all the prophets, and he lays out everything contained in the scriptures. He explains it all to them, just as Jesus had. And we aren't told specifically, but evidently these two followers, they still don't get it. They still don't put it all together. Because as they approach their village, they ask the man to come and stay with them for the night, and he did. And that evening, as they were gathered around the table, the stranger took bread and he offered thanks and he broke it and, and he began to give it to him. And it was in that moment, in the breaking of bread together, that their eyes were opened. It was in that moment at the table communing together that they realized the stranger they'd spent all day with was the resurrected Lord. It was, it was Jesus himself they'd walked and talked with all the way home. And they couldn't believe how they'd missed it. They couldn't believe they'd listened to this man teach the scriptures and, and didn't even realize it was Jesus. And, and almost as quickly as, he, as they realized it was him, he was gone. And they immediately ran and all the way back to Jerusalem, to the very place they just spent all day walking home from. And they found the remaining 11 disciples. And they, they told them about everything that had happened, especially how their eyes were open with the breaking of the bread. Now, I absolutely love this story for so many reasons. But this week, as I thought about it, I related to it in some completely new ways. For one, I, I believe that we're kind of on our own road to Emmaus currently. Like the disciples with everything that's happened these past few weeks, we don't really know what we're walking into, right? We don't really know what this new normal is going to be. When things start to open back up and things start to get back to some sort of normalcy, what's that going to look like? What is normal going to look like after this? Much like them, we, we know that it's going to be different. We know that it won't be the same, but we don't know exactly what this difference is going to be. We don't know what church is going to look like when we're able to finally come back together. And I absolutely love how in those moments of confusion and, and grief as they walked, God, God was with them. They didn't even realize it, but God was walking with them right there, step for step with them. In the midst of everything they were facing, in the midst of everything that they were worried about, all their confusion, all their concern, God was there with them. And I love that imagery. And I find peace in knowing that the same thing is true for us today. I truly believe as we walk through this, confusing as stressful as it may be, worried as we may be, as we try to figure out what's next, as we try to figure out what this new life is going to look like, what this new normal is going to be, God is with us. And I find peace in that. But the one thing that really sticks out to me about this story this week is, is the breaking of bread. When they were finally able to commune together, their eyes were open to everything Jesus had been doing. And I have to believe that when we are finally able to come together again, when we are finally able to commune with one another in person, we will be able to look back on all of this and see where God was at work and just be blown away at 
how amazing God has been. So this week, I don't really have any groundbreaking theological discoveries for you. I don't have any mind-blowing revelations. I just want you to know and find comfort in knowing that God is walking this road with us. Confusing and difficult as it may be, God is walking this path with us step for step. And I don't know about you, but but I look forward to the day when we are able to be back together under one roof, communing with one another in the Bethel Cumberland Presbyterian Church building, when the church is able to come back together to the building. I look forward to that day, and and I know that when that happens, we're going to be able to look back on all of this and see where God has been at work. That's amazing to me, and that's comforting to me. So I pray that we all find comfort in that truth this week. I love you guys. I miss you guys. And I hope to see you soon. Hope you have a good week.